For too long, humanity has existed within dysfunctional and polluted cities that ignore nature. Now, a revolution in civilization is taking place. Imagine a city which is climate controlled, 100% powered by renewables and is carless. We have seen it in the movies for years, but it could be just a few years away. In the Tabuk province of Saudi Arabia, a giant sustainable city intended to inhabit 9 million occupants is being built. This video will run through what is currently known about the city, called Neon, what is planned to make it sustainable, and if the sustainability side of the project is actually feasible. Neon will feature three different parts, which are the line, Oxagon, and Trojina. The line, its largest structure, will compose of one building that will stretch for 170 kilometers and which will be 200 meters wide. The building will also reach a height of 500 meters above sea level. Oxagon will be the world's largest floating structure which will house a hyperscale data center and which is intended to radicalize global manufacturing. Trojina, where the 2029 Asian Winter Games is set to take place, will have elevations ranging from 1,500 meters to 2,600 meters above sea level and will be a year-round mountain resort. The development of these regions is aligned with the Saudi Arabia vision for 2030, which is centered around a vibrant society, a thriving economy, and an ambitious nation. Neom aims to add 380,000 jobs and 48 billion US dollars of domestic GDP to Saudi Arabia's economy by 2030, and it is expected that the project will cost 1 trillion US dollars. The Neom region plans to blend with nature and be a sustainable hub for world businesses. At the moment, it is indicated that the region will be powered by wind and solar energy, part of which will power the world's largest green hydrogen plant. So let's see how feasible all of that really is. So let's start to have a look if it is possible to 100% power this project from renewables. So the average person will use around 3000 kilowatt hours of electricity each year. To meet the requirements for the 9 million inhabitants, we will therefore need 27 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, which is 27 terawatt hours of electricity to be generated each year. So first looking at solar, Enel Villanueva's photovoltaic plant in Mexico became fully operational in 2018 and has the capacity to produce more than two terawatt hours of electricity per year. The plant in Enel Villanueva takes up 24 kilometers squared of land and costed 710 million US dollars to build. So if the plan was to meet the household energy demands using only solar, this means we would need about 13 and a half times the power generation capacity of Enel Villanueva, therefore taking up around 324 kilometers squared of area and costing 9.6 billion US dollars. So from this, it looks like the project could be feasible. However, there are some other considerations which we should consider, which are, will solar panels lifespan be affected by the harsh desert conditions? And also what impact will the production and replacement of these solar panels have on the environment? So now let's look at the feasibility using wind. There is a wind farm in Dumat Al Jandal, Saudi Arabia, which has a power output of 400 megawatts. This wind farm in Dumat Al Jandal will approximately generate 860,000 megawatt hours of electricity, which is 0.86 terawatt hours. Dumat Al Jandal occupies around 71 kilometers squared of space. Therefore, to generate the electricity demand of 9 million people and the 27 terawatt hours of electricity required, we would need about 31 and a half times the number of wind farms, which would cover about 2,236 kilometers squared. Still, considering that Neom will have an area of approximately 26,500 kilometers squared, it is still feasible. Similarly to solar panels, whilst it is definitely feasible to generate all the power required by wind turbines, it's important to note we need to know how the turbines are affected by the harsh weather conditions, and also what impact will the production, construction, and eventual replacement of the turbines have on the environment. So based on yearly energy input and hydrogen output, it takes about 44 kilowatt hours of energy to produce one kilogram of hydrogen from green electrolysis. Whereas the energy density of one kilogram of hydrogen is only 33.6 kilowatt hours. 
the energy within hydrogen needs to be converted back into electricity before it can be used. The efficiency of a hydrogen fuel cell is typically around 60%. London Underground has about 400 kilometers of track and uses about 1.6 terawatt hours of electricity each year. If this was operated using hydrogen trains, we would need about 2.7 terawatt hours of hydrogen, which means energy input will need to be about 3.5 terawatt hours, which is about 13% of the total household energy demand of 9 million people. In area, this would take up about 288 kilometers squared of space if generated using wind turbines, or 42 kilometers squared of space if using solar power. If the efficiency of the green hydrogen plant being created can be improved, energy demands for transport within NEON could reduce significantly. Whilst it is said that the project will be sustainable, it has been estimated by Professor Philip Oldfield that its construction could produce more than 1.8 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide, which is more than four years of UK emissions. So will the city be able to offset construction emissions? Let's look at the current operating emissions, construction emissions, and find out the effective carbon dioxide payback time. So it is estimated that around 15.94 tonnes of carbon dioxide is produced per person. If there is 9 million people, that means 143.46 million tonnes of carbon dioxide. Assuming in the new city everyone will be net zero, so effectively have a carbon footprint of zero, this would mean saving 143.46 million tonnes of carbon dioxide each year, which is equivalent to 0.14 billion tonnes, roughly. With this in mind, it would take just over 12 years to offset the construction emissions. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to support the channel, please like this video and also subscribe to the channel.